Good morning. Happy Monday. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Marketing and Mindset with America Supermom. So I hope your weekend was phenomenal. We are really going through these months. I can't believe we are halfway through the month of May, which is almost halfway through the year of 2022. Can you guys believe it? It is just crazy. Where is the time going? I'm looking up in two weeks is all it is before my kids are out of school for the school year. And for those of you that are empty nesters, pray for me because I still have elementary, middle, and high school children uh, to think about on top of the college graduates or, you know, going to grad school, the some that are in college. It's just every level there's something going on but that we are going to be talking not about that today we're talking about repurposing your content so i'm excited to be your host i am america's super mom i'm the mother of 15 children and 10 of them still live at home but i am about mental wellness and strategy okay so i struggle with depression myself in the past was hospitalized three times, and I'm all about having strategies so that you can have it all, but not at the expense of your health. So I have learned firsthand some things that really just didn't work out. On top of trying to manage a family, uh, being married, being in the ministry, I mean, the number of things that I have been a part of, the list just grows but I'm only one person, couldn't do it all. So I've learned how to have strategies, how to plan, how to uh, really break things down into manageable parts so that I can be the person that I am today. So yes, I'm America's super mom, but my secret is collaboration. Learning how to walk in my zone of genius and connect with other people in theirs so that we don't have to compete. We can just all shine our greatness together and accomplish some phenomenal things that can have a lasting impact for years and years with generations and generations to create that lifelong legacy. So today we're going to be talking about repurposing content. So many of you may be in business or maybe this is something personal You know, everybody is thinking, oh, you know what? I really don't have time to be on social media and all these other things. But what do we do? We pick up our phones. We get on um, TikTok, Facebook, some of these other things. And we look up and the time has passed. And we're trying to figure out what is next, right? We haven't made dinner. You know, we were supposed to be working on a report, a meeting, You know, all sorts of things happen when we lose track of time. So today we're going to be talking about how can we manage the things that we've already created in a way that serves us so that we can have more time to go for those walks and not have to worry about when we answer on the phone or things like that. You know, taking those little mini vacations when you feel like you need a mental health break. Uh, This is Mental Health Awareness Month, and so it is so important to listen to your body, listen to your mind, listen to what's going on so that you can take some time to uh, focus on you and doing the things that are important. So when it comes to repurposing content, again, this is your organic message, Now, sometimes it is somebody else's message. Maybe it's people in your tribe, right? They put a great post up, but repurposing it is just kind of putting your little spin on it. You know, have you ever had a quote that comes up and the person, uh, the quote is great, but it sparks a memory in you or it's something that you're going through right now. And so there's a story that you have that goes along with it. Well, we simply can share that story with the content that we're sharing. So that's one way that we can repurpose it. So you didn't have to come up with a post, but you just looked at somebody else's and it's like, man, 
this is exactly what I was thinking. And then you can add your story to it. So it's like, um, you know, you ask somebody something and they give you an answer and then you ask somebody else and they give you the same answer. And you're like, were you listening? <laughs> they just said that. So you can't say the same answer. You need to say something a little different. You need to add your own story or uh, expertise or maybe it uh, uh, promotes a, a question that you're having or a challenge. So whatever that is, that's the thing that you do when you repurpose it. So don't just post other people's things, but think about how can I apply this to my business, personal life to put my own spin on it? Okay, so repurposing content. Let's get into this. The first place we could do it is charity events. So a lot of people think about, oh, I want to build my brand. I want to get out here and do all these different things. And I get that. However, start where you are. Start with things that really mean a lot to you. Are you a bowler, right? Maybe you can get with, um, you know, some different events that they have to raise money for different charities that resonate with your brand or with something that you're passionate about. So it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Maybe if you're passionate about that, finding out what kind of things are going on. You know, maybe you could share some tips just with your local news, or you can create a blog, share an article, uh, ride someone else's coattails on something, um, contribute to an event. So many things that we could do that could help us with charity events. Now, charity events are also important because you can do press releases. This is free marketing and advertising, no costs, just the ability to be out there in the public because you're doing something for a cause. So charity events is a great way to repurpose content. Now, when I say repurposing, you can take your own messages and find a way to connect them with the charity. So for myself being uh, with Mental uh, Health Awareness Month, dealing with depression, anything that I could do to kind of be... Um, in the spirit of that type of topic. So I just did an event uh, this past week, the end of the week on Friday, and I talked about my journey with depression. So thinking about how you can add your values, your own story or whatever to a charity and connect with them in order to repurpose your content. The next area is community events, which is somewhat similar to, to uh, charity, but it is really connecting with the people that are right there in your local area. So maybe it is schools, maybe it's uh, rec centers, big girls. I mean, what is it? Big brother, little brother. I mean, little sister, big girl. I'm, I can't even think. Okay. YMCA, right? Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, all these different things. Boys and Girls Club is what I was thinking. Okay, so you can connect with these people if they resonate with your message or maybe it's something related to your family, right? Or maybe you have a, a connection who is over one of these boards or very active in these different community uh, events. And it's an opportunity for you to get on board, passing out some of your literature, donating some of your products or services. A number of things you could do with connecting with a platform that has already been created. So when we think of charity, we think of community events, they already have an audience a lot of times. So you were just able to connect with them for a cause that can help you to get your uh, brand awareness out there. The next thing is television appearances. So this is actually something that you could do for your local area. You know, are there some tips that you can share with your local news, right? Maybe it's a newspaper as well, right? So thinking about what it is that you have a value that you can share, any problems that you can solve, maybe some things that you were successful at doing, right? We always think of the news as something gloom and doom, but what about some achievements that you've had recently? In spite of the pandemic, I know I could go through a number of things. Hey, I started a podcast during the pandemic. Uh, I wrote a book 
a collaborative book during the pandemic. I was the only contributor from the United States. It was a global project. Um, you know, homeschooled seven kids during a global pandemic. I mean, so many things that I could bring to the table, and I'm sure you have some as well. So television appearances is something we want to think about as well. Testimonials, right? This is a great way that you can highlight people that are in your network, people that you have done business with, um, you know, an opportunity for you to share, tag them, right, to get some more brand awareness to their audience while highlighting some of the things that you do well. So when you're getting these testimonials, they are speaking specifically to some of your strengths. What is it that you are doing? What are you known for, right? Getting those testimonials that say just that. Another thing that I would add too is because we're in video is, you know, what about testimonials that you're given if you're a podcaster, for example? You know, people get on, they're like, oh, thank you so much for allowing me to be on your show. I really am happy because X, and you know, or they tell the story about how you guys got acquainted or how much value you give for them, whatever that looks like. That's a clip that you could put out there to also be a testimonial. So it doesn't have to be written. It can be video. It can be different formats so that um, it helps other people to kind of see you as a multifaceted person. A lot of times when we see someone as linear, we uh, don't have as much compassion for them if things just happen to go crazy. You know, as we can see, um, not to beat a dead horse, but uh, with the Will Smith, Chris Rock thing. When that happened, people just kept telling that story. It was everywhere, you know, because it can be linear. But when you think about different ways that you can show up with people, you know, it helps them to realize, man, okay, you're different places, but there's different sides of you, which can help them to kind of be more compassionate or empathetic to whatever it is that you may be going through whether it's uh, positive or negative, okay? The next thing is podcasts. So you can have your own podcast or you can be guests on other people's podcasts. This is another curated space where they already have an audience and you're able to make those connections and be seen in a way that you want to be seen. Now, when we think about podcasting, we want to think about how do we want our brand to be showing up, right? What is it that you want to get across to the audience? What is the thing that you want to be known for? Really asking those questions, because if you have that clarity, it's going to shine through as you go through your podcast interview. It's the confidence, it's the ability to be focused, have clarity, to really be clear, you know, whether it's a call to action or if it's just brand awareness or, you know, you're sponsoring an event, whatever, right? Being able to be strategic about the things that you want to share on podcasts, because this is another way that you're out there with evergreen content and a way for people to kind of see exactly what it is that you do and the scope of work that you do. The next thing is mastermind and classes. This is huge. So really getting a group of people. I try to do this once a week. So I used to uh, only do my connection calls one-on-one. -on -one. But over time, you know, during the pandemic, it was so many people that I was connecting with for master classes to doing different things with Facebook groups that I said, you know, let's just re- flipped the script on this. So I started doing group connection calls and it was ended up being like masterminds because other people might share what it is that they're struggling with, or, you know, they tell what they're doing. Somebody else tells what they're doing. And you look up and with everybody's expertise, it's like a mini master class, right? So thinking about how you can connect with people from all different backgrounds. And this is good, too, because it helps us to be flexible, to uh, be vulnerable, 
not get stuck in our own head about things that, you know, really, if you hold on to stuff, time is moving fast and, you know, we're stuck in the way that things used to be. We have to be more pliable to move forward with all the changes that are taking place every day. So I know right now, currently, I'm on this app called Clubhouse. Uh, that's something that is uh, going on right now. It's over a year old. But, you know, thinking about it, uh, there's going to be more than Clubhouse within this year, next year, and, and forevermore, right? Because technology is quickly changing. And so it's important when you have these masterminding classes to be around people that are not always like you, whether it's color, age, gender, uh, culture, whatever. You want to be able to intermix with people of all different backgrounds because this is what helps you to ask questions, to be able to have a more um, a view that helps you to not be so personally attached to the outcomes. You're able to somewhat separate yourself from what it is that you do, how you're feeling in a way that serves you in the long run. The next thing is books and newsletters. Right now, if you're on LinkedIn, LinkedIn has something called creator mode. When you click that part to be uh, listed as that type of person on LinkedIn, then you have the option to do other things that are in beta. Right now, they have um, newsletters. They also have an audio app uh, on LinkedIn where you're able to... Um, broadcast in a different format, something new that they're doing. So when you have creator mode, you have access to some of these things. Now, everybody doesn't always have the same access to different beta uh, opportunities. However, it's still a different way to be in front of a larger audience if some of those things you do have access to when you begin to use them. So you can also create your own courses, write your own books, make your own workbooks or whatever. So this is a great way that you can take all that knowledge and package it in a way that serves you, something that is evergreen so that you're making money while you're sleeping. All right. And the next thing is summits. This is really a good place. Now, yes, you know, we are getting emails, giving away emails, but it's also a great way that you can connect and network with a large group of people at one time. So when you think about summits, it is connecting with them, tagging them in the post that you're doing to promote the product. It's also in my case, for example, being a podcaster, I would reach out to all the people that were part of the summit and say, I'm so glad that I got a chance to connect with you uh, I would love for you to be able to dive more into your expertise on my podcast. I know we were part of a summit and it's like, you know, there's so many different speakers. You really don't have that time to kind of dive into your own topic and sometimes ask questions. So having the opportunity to give someone a platform to share more in depth through a podcast, for example, is a great way to make future connections down the road outside of just the summit, which was a one-time event. And then the last thing is uh, products. What products do you have that maybe you're affiliated with or products that are specific to your brand? So you think about it. What are some ways that you can um, just repurpose content with some of the things that you're sharing with your customers. So for example, FiberWise is a, a wellness um, food item that I get from a shopping club that I'm a part of. So one of the things that I could do is simply create a note, some kind of content that I would share with maybe a customer that might be doing a Mary Kay order because you've got Mary Kay here on the screen. I'm a Mary Kay consultant. So if I'm sending them an order, I could also wrap a message around, you know, the um, fiber wise, right? Whether it's one that I would give them or a box and that content can be, hey, you know, we are in a world right now where things are crazy. Let's make sure that we take care of our mental health 
And one of the ways that we could do that is making sure that we're eating right so that our body is at its optimal performance and we're not causing any more additional stress by not eating healthy or getting rest or the list goes on and on. All right. So that was a lot to kind of go over when it comes to repurposing content. So if you are like, man, that was a lot. I don't know where to begin. I can help you with that. Just text content to the number 706-580-9831. That's my personal cell number. And I would be happy to connect with you to help you on ways that you can repurpose your content so that it works for you. So with that being said, I want to thank everybody for watching. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. But in the meantime, thinking about, you know, how can you take something that maybe you've already used? If, you know how you go back on Facebook if you're on there, those of you that are watching. But with Facebook, they come up and they give you your memories. Three years ago, you did this. Last year, you did this or whatever. That is great content that you can repurpose. Maybe you uh, take some photos of the post. If it was a video, you can uh, pause it and take a photo, tell a story about it. Man, when I did this video a year ago, I was so scared. I was making sure my hair was right. I had the right earrings or whatever that story looks like. But look at me now. It was a result of consistency, perseverance, and uh, doing these videos every day that I learned to grow right? I'm just using this as an example. That's something that someone might want to share. But my issue is, you know, taking that content that was already done and finding a way to repurpose it. How can you share a different side of the story, right? Maybe you could look through your child's eyes. When you first did the post, it was through your eyes. Maybe it's through your neighbor's eye. Maybe it's through your mom's eye or your dad's eye, right? So you see where I'm going. It's repurposing and not reinventing the wheel and doing this extra work. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and reach out to me if you have any questions. I'd be happy to serve you and help you on your journey. But for right now, I want to thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye for now.